this is Colleen Hauk, and I am here to give you the top 10 things you're going to see in my upcoming book, Terraformer. Um, this is um, my science fiction book that is coming out on May 12th of 2020. So here is your number one thing you're going to see in Terraformer. Okay, so number one, the first thing you're going to see in Terraformer is a spaceship. You got to have spaceships in a science fiction book. And uh, I was looking everywhere for some kind of spaceship I could modify or something that looked like uh, a ship that was going to travel across a vast far away part of the, <laughs> of the universe. And this was the closest looking thing I could find. Uh, this is actually a Star Wars ship and I didn't want to open it because I would lose the parts and I wanted to actually give this to my nephew uh, to play with so I'm not going to open it up and play with it and it's kind of smaller than I wanted. I wanted actually a larger one that I could maybe paint or color or something and I couldn't find anything. So this is what I chose, um, kind of a transport ship, um, what I wanted it to look like. So. The number one thing you're going to see is a spaceship. So that's what the book opens up on uh, is a spaceship. So you're going to uh, see a transport ship in the beginning of Terraform. Okay, for my Terraformer thing two you're going to see in my book is obviously if you have a spaceship, we are going to new planet, thus terraforming. Um, so my new planet is a green world actually and so to represent my world I actually bought this um, uh, little marble thing it's actually a gemstone and I have some of these gemstones um, that are um, dragon eggs or phoenix eggs and so I found one that was just a sphere that was all green and you don't know really what color it's going to be when it arrives. Um, most of them come in greens and blues and I got this one that's kind of a, a watered down green color. So I got this one and then when I was at Seattle Comic Con I went to this booth that had these really cool orbs that glow and this one you see it goes on and off. So right now it's off and there it's on again and they come with these like custom made you can kind of see the um whoops, I'm gonna go, whoop, this way they have custom made little containers that hold them so this is representing my world and the green part is the power that is in the middle of my planet so it's glowing green if you came to see me on the Lantern's Ember Tour, you might have seen my other necklace, which is a little jack-o'-lantern, and it has an orange glow inside for, for um, Jack's pumpkin. So I have another one that's a jack-o'-lantern. So I got one for Terraformer and one for Jack. So this one is just my little Terraformer necklace, so it's kind of cute but where so I've got my little terraformer necklace so number two thing you're gonna see in terraformer is a new planet that has a strange uh, power inside of it so there you go number two thing you're gonna see in terraformer okay your number three thing you're gonna see in my book terraformer are trees and the trees you might notice in a theme in a lot of my books is i like trees i like plants i like growing things and so on my new planet i have these giant trees now this one's all lit up and because it's an alien planet these trees are a little bit different and um uh, these trees are a little bit special and I have some special kind of trees in a lot of my books you might notice and they kind of have a theme uh, and I think if some of you have been paying attention I've been saying that this book Terraformer actually gives has given me a way to connect all my books 
together into one universe. And um, I'll give you a hint if you watch this video. Um, the hint is that the thing that connects them is trees. So if you pay very close attention to my trees, you might notice if you pick up my book Terraformer and read it that the trees are what link all my books together. And you might be able to figure out how all my books could possibly be connected in one universe through the trees. Uh, anyway, there are um, some really cool different kinds of uh, flora on this planet, including gigantic trees. So think about the redwood forest only like bigger. <laughs> and that's what you're going to get on this world. You're going to get these super, super giant trees. So that's uh, number three thing you're going to get in this book is giant trees. Okay, the number four thing you're going to get in my book, Terraformer, or that you're going to see in my book, uh, is um, animal-plant hybrids. And um, there's another video where I show you how I made these. And these are little um, bug-animal hybrid crafts that I made. So if you look on, I think it's Terraformer craft video. You'll see, um, well, I don't really teach you how I made them because I didn't know how I was going to do it before I did it. So my mom and I made these together. So these were just like giant toy bugs. And then we just painted them and put leaves, like hot glue leaves on. So in the book, you're going to see um, uh, these giant plant animal hybrid things. So um, there's a whole bunch of them. Here's, here's a wolf that we made, and he's got kind of a whiplash, uh, whipper tail thing. And then here is a giant grasshopper. Grasshoppers already kind of look like plant hybrids to me. And here's a butterfly that we did. And so you can kind of see that we did the colors and the thing theme to match the book cover and what is this a beetle so we have a beetle and we did a lion there is a lion in the book there is um, in the book we call him a leaf lion so his mane ends up being made of leaves and I took these like stick things from one of the leaves and made him like a pricker leaf tail um, which kind of reminds me of the chimera in uh, the tiger series, actually, because there was a chimera that had kind of a whip tail too. Um, and then what else have we got here? We have ooh, my butterfly clip. Um, and then we've got, I think this was an ant, maybe? One, two, three, four. I don't know what this was, but we gave this another, another stick thing on the front and then uh, we've got a dragonfly so we give him an extra leafy tail and then we have what was he I think this one was a ladybug and then we ended up putting flowers on the back of the ladybug so you're gonna see animal plant hybrids in the book which is gonna be fun and interesting so stay tuned for that one so that one's your number four Okay, your number five thing you're going to see in my book, Terraformer, is dun, 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 how could you have a plant planet without one of these guys? Yes, yes, you've got one of these guys. For those of you who have read um, my Reawaken series, you might remember I had kind of alien pod things that tried to eat uh, my characters in that one too. This one um, is slightly different. It is a pod creature, but it's not a not a toothy one. So, um, but I couldn't find one that was just a plain pod online. So I had to buy this one. 
Yes, I had to buy this one, but um, uh, I, I haven't modified it yet. In fact, I think I might put this one in my in my troll fairy garden because it's just so cool, and this seems like something that would grow in a troll fairy garden. Um, yeah. So anyway, you're gonna see a pod, a giant pod in terraformer because you have to have one of those. I think it's necessary. Anyway, that's your number five clue that's going to be in Terraformer is a giant pot. All right. All right. Moving on. Okay. Your number six thing you're going to see in Terraformer is leaf armor. And this was actually hard to get on by myself. <laughs> And I think I have too much string. I'm like, why did I only get one string for two pieces? And I think I was supposed to cut it and thread it on here. But you're going to see kind of this um, uh, leaf armor stuff. And I found this on, um, what website did I get it off of? I order most of my stuff on a certain website and I just space the name of it. I'll try to remember and put it on the credits of the video. But um, uh, yes, this is actually like elf armor or something. And it's actually not very comfortable. It's okay. It's not too bad because it doesn't go all the way around. And it probably would protect you. It's pretty hard, actually. And it's kind of cool looking, huh? Um, and you could actually probably use it as a crown or something if you wanted to. It's kind of cool. Or make it into a belt if you strung a whole bunch of them together. I kind of like it. Anyway, but yes, so you're going to see leaf armor um, in the book. Somehow it's going to happen. So wait till you find out. But that's your number six clue that's coming to you in Terraformer. So wait till you find out what that is. Hi, so we are here doing our number seven. Uh, number seven thing that you're gonna see in my book, Terraformer. And that is the myth of um, Daphne and Apollo, which is a Greek myth, and the story goes that Cupid, who is the son of Venus, the love, um, the love god, the Valentine guy, he shot Apollo with an arrow to make him fall in love with a dryad named Daphne. And uh, Daphne did not return Apollo's affection and amorous attention, and so she ran away from him. And um, some stories say it's because she was in love with someone else, and some stories say it's because Cupid was vengeful and he shot her heart with a leaden arrow, making her not love Apollo. So she ran away and Apollo chased her, and she ran to the river, which was her father's domain, because river gods um, uh, are the father of dryads. And so she asked her father for help, and he changed her into a laurel tree. And so I have this statue that I bought, and this is a Daphne and Apollo statue. And you can see the transformation happening. So she, the bark is here at the bottom where her legs are turning into a bark, bark of a tree. And then her hair is turning into um, leaves and leaves up here at the top. So poor Apollo, he was thwarted in his desire. His amorous attention was not returned. And, but because he loved her, he took laurel leaves and he made himself a laurel crown. And so that's what they used um, in the Olympics actually is laurel leaves to crown the winner. Um, and then the laurel trees always remained um, vibrant and beautiful year round. Uh, so I used um, part of this myth um, for this story because it's a green planet and um, I liked that story. So that's what you're going to see, number seven. And if you've been hearing knocking on my window over here, I have a little Oregon junco bird and it's springtime right now. And he has been sitting on my porch on my patio furniture and he actually is in love with himself. And he's been staring at his reflection for four days and he just flies up and he 
looks at himself in the in the window and he sings his little heart out every morning to himself so he's in love with himself so i think cupid struck his little heart uh and he's really looking for someone to make a nest with and poor little bird he can't find a little bird as beautiful as himself so um, he's a little narcissist bird, I guess, but he's been singing to himself every morning for four days at my window and he hits every window in my house. So he's very happily singing to himself every morning. So if you hear pounding and he's, he's just knocking at my glass trying to sing. So that's, that's what the noise you might hear on my window sill is. Okay, we're on number eight. So number eight is kind of a weird one, and I don't really have something to represent this, so I'm gonna show you something weird. Um, I have, this is called a green man. Um, I've got one of these, and I put these up all over my property. Um, I have about 10 acres of land um, in Oregon, which is very beautiful land, and I've got these little green man faces that I put up all around on these old trees that I have out here. And then I asked my nieces and nephews to send me name ideas for these guys. Um, and I only got a couple of suggestions. So I kind of did a one of those name generator things. And so I ended up with a couple names and I have these little name tags made. So I've got scrub leg and Madwood. And so I, I nail these names under the trees and then um, when my nieces and nephews come out to visit, I give them a, a little checklist and they have to go find all these tree guys. So that's your number eight. It's kind of a weird one is um, in this book, we have some personalities that are not normal, that are not people you might think of as people. So you're going to figure that one out for yourself when you read the book. So you've got some interesting personalities that you're going to have to find like a scavenger hunt, just like my nieces and nephews um, in this book. So you're going to have to find these unique personalities. That's your number eight clue. Okay. <laughs> Okay, number nine is you're going to see a whole bunch of alien plants and flowers. Um, and I'm getting busy right now doing another craft where I'm going to make a kind of a hairpiece crown just like hers. Well, not just like hers because I don't think I can make that. But I'm going to try to make um, a, a crown-ish type of hairpiece crown. Uh, as close as I can um, and you'd be surprised how hard it is to find uh, topiary little animal things to go but I found some not exactly like that but I did find some so um, you're gonna find some interesting uh, plants and uh, leaves and vines and other such things on this planet so be prepared for interesting uh, alien mm, uh, vegetation. So that's your number nine. Okay, and the last thing you're gonna see in my book, Terraformer, number 10 is the goddess Gaia. Um, you're, this is, um, uh, another myth that I pulled from loosely uh, for this book, Terraformer. Um, so this is a statue, again, that I got off of uh, Design Toscano again. And I just love her. And she kind of actually looks a little bit like the picture on my book, which um, was a little bit unintentional because I actually bought the statue after we did the book cover, which is interesting. Um, so, but you can see she's got the horn on the head and we've got like the deer horn on there and I love the coloring of her clothes. I just think they're so perfect and you've got the big piece of wood here in the back and I love that she has like one leather shoe and not the other one. I think that's so cool. 
Um, anyway, she's gorgeous. I love her. I think she's so cool. And she even has purple flowers in her hair, which is perfect. It just works so well. The colors match and everything. So I was so thrilled when I found her online. I think she's perfect. Everything is perfect for her. So she, she's number 10, the goddess Gaia. Perfect. So, and I'm going to do, I'm going to try my best to do a makeup and hair blog. Um, I'm not a makeup girl, but I actually have a makeup girl, but she can't come right now because of the virus. So I'm going to try to do a makeup uh, hair blog to do costumey hair and makeup for you for this book. So we'll see how that turns out. I'm not great at it, but We'll see how it turns out. It should be fun or funny. Anyway, so there you go. There's your top 10 things you're going to see in Terraformer. Okay, have a great day.